tonight. I know some of you have already heard this. My name is Jack Osteen. I'm publisher of the Item Newspaper. And uh, the Item Law and Miller Communications is asking, happy to be hosting the State Senate District 35 Forum. We're at the second part of our evening where we have the Democratic candidates tonight. Um, each of these candidates will tell you in their own words why you should vote for them. And of course, the evening is set up into two forms. We're in the second part right now. On stage to my left are our moderators. Mr. Brayden Bunch from the item and Mr. Derek Burr for us with Miller Communications and the uh, Good Morning Sumter Show. Um, the candidates will each have 90 seconds for their opening remarks and closing remarks and then 60 seconds for their answers. Um, since the questions and answers will come in quick succession, we ask that you try to withhold any outburst. That being said, we ask you in helping us uh, welcome our candidates on stage to give their opening statements. And we will first start with Mr. Matt McLeod to come forward. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mike McLeod and I'm candidate for District 35, Senate seat. I would like to just tell you a few, minute, a few things about myself. I served in the South Carolina General Assembly for 10 years. I'm the only one that is running that has any legislative experience. I think that's extremely important. I would like for you to judge me when you go to vote on my resume. I think it's a, a pretty good one. I've served six years here at Sutton on Development Board. I serve, I serve currently on our Habitat for Humanity Board. I'm the treasurer of that. I also uh, served as our chairman of our delegation here in, in Sumner County. I also served Clarendon County for 10 years. I also served on the um, COP board with the Santee Lynches. I, I've got the experience to do this job. I can go to Columbia and I can get the job done. A lot of people say, let's go to Columbia, let's sit around, let's get some seniority. Let's learn how to do it. I don't have to go over there and sit around and learn how to do it. I know how to do it. But I was there before. I was recognized as a pretty hardworking fellow over there. And I know a lot of the people that are in the Senate, I've already served with them. I know them very well. They're friends of mine. And I think I can jump right in there and go to work. And I plan to jump right in there and go to work. I plan to represent these four counties just like I did the two counties in the past. And I plan to work hard to help you. And I need your vote on June the 12th. Thank you very much. Seat. Now we'll hear from Mr. Thomas McElmean. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name, my name is Thomas McElmean. I'm a Democratic candidate for South Carolina State District 35. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm from Sumter. And kind of like Mr. Barber said earlier, after I finished school, I came running back to try to make a difference in my community. Now, most of you know, we are losing a lot of seniority in the city by losing John Land, and by losing Phil LeVent. It's two long-term long senators from this area. What that tells you is it's time to start building some, some, new, some new seniority with some new leadership in a newly redrawn district that now not only encompasses Sumner County and Lee County, but also parks Kershaw and Richland County. Ladies and gentlemen, I pledge to you that I've got the energy and the enthusiasm to get out and not just represent some people, but represent all people. I pledge to you to be a senator who will get over there, but who will be approachable and accessible in this district to listen to your concerns and take them back to Columbia. I pledge to use a fair, common sense approach to governing and, and, to, and to approach problems we have with common sense and the, and the willingness to listen. Now, I understand tonight we're getting some questions and we got 60 seconds to answer. I'm going to do my best to do that, but I don't think the issues and the concerns that we face in this district and in the state can be summed up in 60 seconds. But I hope tonight I'll give you at least a snapshot of where I stand on some of these important issues. And I'll be happy to stand up there afterwards and hopefully talk to some of you about your concerns. Again, I'm Thomas McElveen, running the Democratic primary on June 12th. We'd love to have your support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McElveen. And now I'll turn it over to our moderators, Mr. Brady Bunch and Mr. Derek Burris. Thank you, Jack. And gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining us on the stage. As we did before, we'll have some questions that both of you will answer and some of them that will be directed individually to you. These first series of questions you'll both answer, however, and we'll start with you, Mr. McCloud. Like the Republicans on stage before you, you're both seeking to replace retiring State Senator Phil Levinas. For your first question tonight, tell us the one thing Senator Levinas did that you disagreed with the most while he was in office. Good. 
I disagree with it pretty much about the consolidation the way you handle that. Uh, and in fact, I ran against it four years based on that, that he did not go to the people before he consolidated two schools. And I agree with what was set up a while ago, that it was not set up properly, and that's why we have a lot of trouble we have now. Thank you, sir. Mr. Braden, I'm actually not here tonight to criticize Bill Venice about anything. Uh, Senator Levin has served honorably. He served admirably for this district for a long time. He's also a patriot who served his country when he didn't have to. It's hard for me to sit here. I'm more focused on moving forward, not talking about you know, things that Phil Levin has did wrong. Um, I know a lot of folks got on him about his filibustering. He, he was not afraid to stand up and take a stand when often it wasn't popular. He took a lot of criticism for that. I admired him as a man who was willing to get over there and stand up for what he thought was right. It's, it's difficult for me to criticize. Our next question is uh, directed to both of you. It's a general question. We'll begin with uh, Mr. McElveen for the answer. Also, like we asked in the previous session, we would like to know, if elected, which committee or committees you're hoping to serve on at the State House and what expertise you would bring to this committee or committees. Well, I think, you know, I think we'd like to have someone uh, on, on the Finance Committee over there. I think that's, you're going to be as a first-term senator either on Finance or on the Judiciary Committee. Again, as a first-term senator, it will be difficult to get a seat on the Finance Committee, but I think I'd be a natural fit for the Judiciary Committee. I haven't practiced in law now for the better part of a decade. I actually serve on a committee right now through the South Carolina Bar in Columbia. It's called the Judicial Selection Committee. And what we do is we actually screen candidates who are running for judgeships across the state every election cycle. And based on those screenings, which we spend a lot of time doing, we make a recommendation to the General Assembly. I've also recently been elected to serve on the House of Delegates of the South Carolina Bar, uh, which, is, which is an honor. I'll start serving this spring. Of course, if I'm elected to the Senate, I have to resign both of those, both of those um, positions. I also think another good, good fit would be natural resources and agriculture or uh, fish, game, and wildlife. I think I enjoy serving on one of those as, as a second committee. And of course, in this area, we enjoy our natural resources. We enjoy our wildlife. That's one commonality among the four counties that make up the district. All right, District McLeod. Uh, if I would on that, of course, I'd love to get on the Finance Committee. And what I can contribute to that is the fact that I have a master's in business administration. And I've also run successful businesses and still run some. But uh, also, I, I, I'd like to be on the Commerce Committee. I think the Commerce Committee would give me contacts that could help the district clearly. I think um, Commerce is just the place where we can get the money, we can get the leads, and we can help do things that can get the infrastructure like we need it all throughout this community. So either one of those would suit me fine. I, I think I could bring some expertise to either one of them because I've been there before and I've done that, and I've been on the Commerce Committee before. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Once again, we'll, this is for both of you, but we'll start with Mr. McLeod. And this is one of those questions that, quite frankly, we probably wouldn't ask in any other election cycle. However, this, once again, is in regards to your candidacy. After the, the day after the state Supreme Court made a ruling that ultimately struck hundreds of candidates from ballots across the state, the Sumter County Democratic Party filed a brief with the Supreme Court asking it to reconsider its decision because, the local party said, all of its candidates had followed the guidelines the state party and the election commission had provided, even though those directions were ultimately wrong. So tell us, should you actually be on the ballot, and why do you think your candidacy will survive a legal challenge should a direct one occur? Mr. McLeod, we begin with you. Well, I can't answer whether it will survive a ch challenge or not, because the Supreme Court has taken some, some and taken the words a little bit too plain. When we were in the general, when I was in the general assembly, the general assembly now, usually the intent of the law is usually interpreted by courts. The Supreme Court chose not to do that this time. The intent of the law was to have you file your economic interest report. And anybody that gave a confirmation that that had been done should not have any problem whatsoever being on the ticket. Now, I don't know that the new challenge is up now. I don't know what will happen. But I would say that everyone, and I'm talking about the ones that have been knocked off, were knocked off wrong. Anybody that got their stuff in on time should be allowed to run. Thank you, Mr. Mickle. I'd echo a lot of those comments. You know, I, I read the amicus brief that was filed in Sumter County, and I uh, was not consulted before that was filed, so I don't know what was really behind that. Um, but as far as I know, everyone in, my, in this race has been, um, it's been certified by the party. Everyone's going to appeal the primary ballot. I don't want it any other way. Um, there are some ambiguities and there's some uh, inconsistencies in the law right now. 
and I can promise you, as a first-term senator, one of my first orders of business would be to introduce a bill to get those things straight. Because I can tell you, it's hard for all five of us to come out and run for office. And certainly, I don't want to take any of those choices away from the voters. It's not an easy thing to do, and I think by taking choices away based on an unintended result of the law is a bad thing for democracy, it's a bad thing for our district and our state. Um, so we're all on the ballot, we'll keep moving forward just like we have been for the last several months. Thank you, sir. All right. Gentlemen, we'll be going to a few uh, individual questions, and uh, this first question uh, is targeted to Mr. McElveen. In your last campaign disclosure form reported online, at least 48 of the 76 people or groups making contributions to your campaign were either individual attorneys or law firms. And at this time, 15 of the state's 46 state senators list their vocation as either attorney or lawyer. Why would sending another one to the state house benefit Sumter? Well, I think in most lawyers, you know, and, and people have to understand in this area, when we have law firms, we're also small business owners. We face, we face the same obstacles and challenges that everyone faces. We understand how small businesses work. I've been a member of the Chamber of Commerce uh, board, and you know, we, we struggle. We struggle to make payroll, we struggle to provide health insurance for our employees. So we understand more, we understand small business as well as the law. Um, I actually think we don't have enough lawyers over there right now. I think if we, start, if we had more lawyers, we'd be writing better laws. Uh, this, the Judiciary Committee right now is having a hard time filling those spots with lawyers who understand the law and who understand the legislative process. So I actually think you know, that it, would, it would be a strong suit to add another lawyer over there, a lawyer who's fair-minded, a lawyer who works with people in different interests to sit down and to get things done. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. McLeod, this question is for you. From 1878 until 2000, the Democratic Party controlled the state Senate in Columbia. And in fact, in 1964, all 46 senators were Democrats. 21st century, however, has seen the Republicans take over both the Senate, the House, and all the state constitutional offices. Considering this, why should Sumter and District 35 send yourself a member of the minority party to represent them in Columbia? I think the minority party is a very important party, and the bigger it is, the better it will be. I, the Republicans felt the same way when they were the minority party. And uh, to say that we shouldn't have a minority party would be to say, let's just let everybody go with that be a Republican, and let's forget about the two-party system. I think we go over there, you have to be heard. Compromises are made all of the time with people in the other party. It's because one party doesn't always agree with everybody. So I, I think it's very important for someone to go over there for a minority, minority party, especially someone that believes in helping the people that this minority party believes in helping. Thank you. Very good. Uh, our next question uh, is going to be for both of you. And uh, let's see, question number six. Uh, this will be uh, Mr. McElveen, who will go first on this one. During his career, Senator Levinas was recognized either positively or negatively, depending on your point of view, as a senator in tune with environmental issues. What environmental issues do you feel are facing the state now, and what would you propose doing about them? Well, I think that probably his, his concern for environmental issues is part of Senator Levinas' biggest legacy. Uh, in, this, in this state, in particularly in this area, you know, the West Watery, uh, Watery Basin area that we live in with Kershaw, Lee, Sumter, and uh, Richland counties, our, our natural resources are something we have to protect. Um, we can't replace them. In South Carolina, we have everything from the Atlantic Ocean up to the Blue Ridge Mountains. We've got woodlands, streams, rivers, ponds in between. It's a very important part of our economy for tourism and for the enjoyment of our citizens. So definitely I would be conservation-minded I actually was honored last week to get the official endorsement of the conservation voters of South Carolina, which I very much appreciate, and I'm very much committed to the issues that they care about. Um, we've got to make sure that we are good stewards of our natural resources so the next generation can enjoy them just like we have. And this is well, I, I think pretty much I'm a natural for this because I am a farmer. I've been a farmer all my life. So I, that no one takes care of the environment more than the farmer does because that's where we make our living. So we have to protect that. On our particular farm now, we have wetland areas that we're protected in the programs. We participate in the programs. I have a father that was in soil conservation for 30-some years, almost 40 years, and worked with that. So it's been instilled in me that we've got to do things for the environment, take care of the environment. But at the same time, we have to realize that people have to make a living out there too. So we have to learn to balance things, and we have to think about things 
in a, in a way that works out for everybody. Very good. Thank you, sir. Once again, these questions will be both for both of you. Once again, we'll start with you, Mr. McLeod. Uh, in order to lure Continental Tire to Sumter, several investments and tax breaks were made by local and state government, including millions of dollars to purchase and provide the land free of charge to the company. How much does how much becomes too much to give a company? And as senator, how would you propose the state balance incentives with economic recruitment? Well, I think it's competitive, and so you've got to give what you've got to give if you want it. And that's basically it. When you're competing with another area, and if they're offering something, you better offer it too, or you're not going to get them if you want them that bad. I think something needs this extremely bad, and so I would say we, we would just have to do what we got to do to get it here. And in time, it will take care of itself. But right now, we're giving up a lot of things and a lot of money, and it's going to hurt us, especially some of our education money. But we need, we need to know that the public may have to make up some of that in the short term. Thank you, sir. Mr. Michael. Right now, unemployment in the state is at 8.8%. Uh, here in Sumter County, we're actually slightly above, above that number. We're closer to 10%, I believe. We got some good things on the way, but we got to get more. We got a lot of people to put back to work after what's been a broad range of recession. We got to keep working. We can't hesitate. We can't stop. Now, as far as, as recruiting new industry, new business, we got to take it on a case by case basis. You want to give them as much incentive as you can to come here. Because if you don't, somebody else will get that business and will get that will get those jobs. But you also got to got to protect what you have here. Here in Sumter, in this area, small business is the lifeblood of our economy. That's why I think you sit down with local leaders. You sit down with, with city and city and county uh, officials. You sit down with the legislative delegation. You, you sit down with private citizens and say, "We're going after this new business. Is it a good fit? Will it mesh up with our local economy?" And if it is, on a case-by-case -case basis, you pursue it as hard as you can. We've got to get people back to work. Thank you, sir. Right. Very good. This, the next question is, once again, for both of you, we'll begin with Mr. McElveen. Gentlemen, John, Bob, Jonathan Swift wrote, Invention is the talent of youth, as judgment is of age. When Mr. McLeod was first elected to the State House of Representatives, Mr. McAdeen, you were in the third grade. <laughs> By the same token, Mr. McAdeen has recently begun his career, while Mr. McLeod, you've already had a career and retired from it. To each of you, explain to us why your age is the greater asset. Mr. McAdeen? Well, I can remember when Mr. McLeod went to the legislature, because my dad went in the same year, I believe, in 1986. Um, I'm not saying a younger person or an older person can do this job any better. Um, I'm sure that you know, Senator Levinas, uh, Senator Lynn, and Merle Smith, who I see sitting out there tonight, probably got asked the same questions because each one of those was my age or younger when they first got elected. Um, what I can promise to do is, is to bring energy and enthusiasm out there to make sure I get to all to all people in the district and represent their concerns as best I can. You know, I am younger. I'm 34 years old. But one thing about me is, is right now I've got real world concerns. I share the same concerns with many of you concerned many of you have. I've got a mortgage, I've got student loans, I've got bills to pay every month. Uh, we're trying to operate a small business and now trying to run for office. But you know, I understand people's concerns um, and I understand the values of hard work, but I'm also willing again to listen, uh, to get out and listen. I think that's the most important hallmark of a, hallmark of a good public official. To listen to what's going on here and, and do the talking when you get to Columbia. All Sorry, right. Jack. Mr. McLeod? Talk about the old guy in. <laughs> well, yeah, what, what I would say basically is age gives experience. And I put on my slogan, uh, life experiences, legislative experiences. Well, I've got both. I've raised a family, and I've educated a family, and I know what it takes to do it. And I know how you have to deal with young people and how you have to deal with old people. And I, I think I'm wiser now than I was when I was 30. I know I should be wiser than I was when I was 30. And I think a little bit of age when you go to the South Carolina Senate is important. That's not a group of young people in the South Carolina Senate. And uh, I think that my age will bear itself to be more of one of the people that can get things done and can talk on the same level with the senators that we have over there now and try to get some things done. I think I've earned some respect over my life doing the things I've done, and I think that's respect will carry in to the General Senate. Very good. We're going to go back to uh, some individual questions. This uh, next one is uh, targeted to uh, Mr. McLeod. And Mr. McLeod, a strong effort was made several years ago by members of the Sumter delegation to make USC Sumter a four-year institution. With the recent changes at the campus, 
Is this still something worth pursuing? Probably not, because the Palmetto College has taken over. Palmetto College will give us more degrees here than something being a four-year school would. The problem with USC Summit is enrollment is down too far. The enrollment, uh, we should have applied for nursing school 10 years ago because it would have got us up in a hurry. I had suggested that at one time, but we never went anywhere. We had to develop the board that was even behind that. But uh, no, I think right now we're going to have to try to save USC Summit because it's having some economic problems right now. And we've got to convince people that that school will be a viable player in our community and we can play with, go with the Powell College and get these kids educated. I worked there for 10 years and we educated a lot of people and a lot of got four-year degrees right there on the campus. Thank you very much. And this is our last question before we go back into our lightning round question. And this question is for you, Mr. McElwain. And it is such, the word legacy is a double-edged sword in politics. Should you win the primary, it is most likely you will be appearing on the general election ballot with another McElveen, namely your father, Sumter Mayor Joe McElveen. Why do you expect voters to be willing to cast votes for both you and your father? Well, that's something I thought about from day one when I first started thinking about getting involved in this race. And really, when you think about it, a, a good portion of this district is actually outside of the city. Now, there's a significant part of the city that is in the district also, and our names will appear on the same ballot in some areas. But all I can tell you is, you know, I'm proud of my dad. Uh, he's been in public service for a long time. He's been there for the right reasons. I think he served honorably. He served in a way that makes me proud. Um, I grew up watching him, and of course, you, know, you watch your father do it long enough, it'll get you interested in it too. Um, he's been a good role model for me, and I, won't, I, I will not hide from that or be ashamed of that. I appreciate him for that. But since I started running this campaign, this has been my thing. Um, my father has stepped back from it. He's been there for, to give me advice but he's not out campaigning with me, I've got to do this on my own. That's why my signs say Thomas McElveen right there on big two by eights to let people know this is me, not my father. I'm going to do this on my own and I'm going to do, I'm going to do the job the best I can. All right, we have uh, some lightning round questions. These will be for both uh, candidates. Of course, uh, yes or no answers are very short answers and we're going to Mr. Front uh, bunch of answers the first question. Yeah, and the same point you heard earlier, so if you've had a couple of chances to prepare for this, but yes or no, starting with you, Mr. McLeod, should state senators be served to term limits, and if so, how many terms? No, they should not. Thank you. Mr. McLeod. I think it's a good idea to have new and fresh ideas coming in, but I don't see term limits happening any time in this state in South Carolina Senate. Thank you. All right. Gentlemen, are you for or against the constitutional amendment outlawing gay marriage? I'm for the amendment. I believe the same. You may have to a man and woman. I'd be for the amendment as well. All right. For against the school choice voucher program, Mr. I am totally against it. Completely against vouchers. We got to take care of our public education system first. All right, gentlemen. And for against the flat tax, eliminating property and income taxes in lieu of a much larger sales tax, Mr. McAfee. Is that the flat, ta flat tax question? Flat tax. Again, it's a hard, it's a hard question to answer unless you can actually see the proposal. I'm for more fair and equitable taxes. I think we definitely need comprehensive tax reform. In this area, property taxes have been a big concern. Mr. I think I get you. I think the people who have the most need to pay a little more. Thank you. For or against the recently passed the Challenge Voter ID law, Mr. McElveen? Against, Mr. McClellan. I, I'm against the voter ID thing until we figure out how to help people get their birth certificates at all straight. Thank you. All right, and we'll start with Mr. McLeod on this one. Best governor in the history of South Carolina. Me? Dick Riley. Yeah. I have to agree. The things Dick Riley did for public education have been unprecedented since then. Once again, then we made the Republicans answer in your turn, Gamecocks or Tigers? Oh, there's no doubt about it. Gamecocks. <laughs> well, I think, I think most folks here know where I stand. I've got a wife who's got a... Uh, We've got a father and a stepmother to teach at Clemson. So I believe in both of our... Mr. McElveen answered the question. Forever to be. <laughs> Forever to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for participating tonight. Thank you to our... <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Thank you very much for the candidates. I believe the candidates before as well as these did a fantastic job. And uh, Sumter has a lot of great choices to choose from. And but we have closing statements. So let's do that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to uh, thank, first of all, Jack Osteen. I want to thank Derek Burris and thank Brady Plunge for being such great hosts tonight. Also, want to thank Noah Communications and thank the Ivy for putting this great event on. Most of all, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank each and every one of you because the fact that you're sitting here shows us that you care. I also want to thank our online and radio listeners. Thanks for tuning in. Keep watching us, ladies and gentlemen. I talked about getting, getting out and working hard for this district. That's what we've been doing for the last three months. That's what we'll keep doing for the next couple of weeks. I'd ask each and every one of you to please consider voting in the Democratic primary on June 12th. And when you go to vote, please consider voting for Thomas McElveen. Thank you. Enjoy being here tonight. Putting this on, and I'd like to thank the audience for being here. I'd just like to say one thing one of the most important things that has come to some is Continental Tire. And I want you to take a look when they start hiring their chief executive officer and ask yourself are they going to look for experience? Are they, they going to look for somebody that they know what they'll get done? Or are they going to take a chance with that company with somebody that's never done anything like that before? I think it's extremely important that you look at the resume of your candidates when you send them to Columbia and decide whether or not you want something done in the short term or you want something done in the long term. I think we need stuff done in the short term extremely bad now in this community. We've got a shot at doing things, but we've got to get on the ball and get it rolling now. I ask you to look at my candidacy, look at my resume, check me out, check out the 10 years I was in the General Assembly, see what I did, see whether you agree with what I did, and I, I appreciate it on June the 12th if you would vote for Amy McClatt. Thank you. Thank you again, both candidates. Sorry my moderators didn't tell me to give you closing statements. They tried to cut you off early. But again, thank you to Mr. Derek Burris and Mr. Brady Bunch. We a great job in that. Obviously, uh, the folks that heard it on the radio did, and we will have it um, online on the item.com at live stream tonight, but I'm sure we'll have at least pieces of it, so please go to the website and look for that as well. Thank y'all for um, just what you're doing and your commitment to run for office. Thank y'all. Have a great evening. Also on the item.com, and once again, thanks to all of our five candidates, and we now return to our prayer.